years and still be continually in my mouth. We thank God for this another day that He has given to us. We bless His name for all that He has done. How many of you know that it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time? One more time. We are grateful unto God. We are grateful unto God for you who are here. Grateful unto God for those that are watching us. Thank God for those who may be listening to us on this morning. This is the day. I said this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Dr. Karen Hardaway, for leading us in our devotion up to this point. And thank you for those who have participated as well. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 40. Go back to the passage of scripture that we have spoken to you on last week. But I want to move up a little bit. I'm just going to work around this scripture for a few weeks. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, verse of chapter 40, verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak of Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, and he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And he gives power to the faint, the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. The God has first blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your people, and for this place of worship. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. I ask that you stand. I need a congregation of young people. Somebody. Anybody. Come on, both of y'all sing a solo way. Both of y'all, so y'all got time to think about it. Amen.
He's the joy in the midst of sorrow. He is my today and tomorrow. God is. Somebody ought to help me say, God is. Oh, <laughs> 
after telling her that some of the hospital reports were not true. And um, God just pray for me, for that for me. Um, we are we are uh, preparing for our church on the anniversary. And I know that some people have uh, mentioned some things, some people want to honor some other people that we've already honored in the past. My problem honoring people is that sometimes you need to pick new people as well. There's other people that are worthy to be honored. And you just don't want to pick the same ones over and over again. And so, um, one the church hundred anniversary is in July. There's some people that I was going to ask to also serve. Vivian had mentioned something there. I wanted to uh, talk to Brother Roger. I didn't even talk about that. I wanted to see if he could help and um, uh, talk to Brother Carlton and to um, our doctor residents who's not here today. Also, see if they could help as well. Get the men involved as well and with whoever else. We, we are speedily towards. If I have a look at it, this year is flying by. We'll be in May. We'll be in May. Um, next week, next week, uh, Reverend Joshua Hutchins will be preaching. Uh, we'll be honoring my father-in-law by dedicating the library, my deceased father-in-law in Arkansas next Sunday, Saturday. So we will be there. Later that week, we'll be traveling to Lynchburg, Virginia for the commencement graduation for my wife.
He just came in the door and said that she needed me to pray for Sheila. I think her name is. Um, Sheila also prayed for Sister Louise Williams. Also prayed for Sister Emma Williams. Prayed for Sister Katie. We prayed for everybody. Pray for each and every one of you. Yes, for everything. We are praying for him. We also praying for uh, Miss Janice. Miss Janice. Good name. She, she listened and make sure she did that. I said her name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Me and Nicole and, and, and Mitchell are going to try to do this song. I know you're looking at me. I know you're looking at me. <laughs> We're going we to try it today. Hallelujah. We also pray for our pastor. Um, pray for his strength. We know that God is able. God is able. God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So you know what? During this time, we're going to just undergird it. Just lift him up in prayer. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for me and commit this all. Pray for me. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadows grass and leads me beside the quiet tree.
there is safety. God, we know that in your arms is healing. God, we know that in your arms is deliverance. Oh God, in your arms there is assurance of salvation. Oh God, in your arms is fullness of joy. In your arms, oh God, is strength. So God, we come in aid to say thank you for having us wrapped up in your arms. Oh God, nobody else's arms we would rather be than to be in the arms of God. We thank you in the name of Jesus for being such a good God. We thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for being a delivering God. We thank you for being El Shaddai. We thank you for being Adonai. We thank you for being Elohim, oh God. We thank you for being El Elyon. We thank you for being sovereign. We thank you for being our joy, our hope, our tomorrow, our future. God, we thank you for being the door that needs to be Oh, and that all power is in your head. 
40 again, and um, thank God for um, Brother Mitchell, Brother Jacoby. Yeah, I don't even have to sit in there. Amen. So thank God. Isaiah chapter 40. Let me do this. I wrote this, uh, well, put most of this together last night after um, the information I received, but it says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Why sayest thou of Jacob and speakest so of Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Are there any faints, folks in here? To them that have no might, he increases strength. Are there any weak folks in here? Even the youth shall faint, be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. I want to talk about disappointment or being discouraged because the fact is that um, we all get discouraged sometime. You sit here and you say you don't and I can't really believe what you're saying. Um, discouragement comes and discouragement goes. Discouragement goes, discouragement comes. You ushers in you see it. This God discouraged In a text, the people of God are at the point of giving up. They have become discouraged. Instead of praising God, the nation was complaining to him that he acted as though he did not know their situation or have any concern for their problems. Have you ever had a point in your life that you sat down and initially you may have had this conversation with your own self, but then as it went on, you began to talk to God and you said to God that, why does it seem like you have left me? Why does it seem like there is no answer? Why is all this happening to me? These people, after going through all of these things, they now are complaining to God. They said he does not know about our situation. He does not have any concern for our problems. And instead of seeing the open door down the road, the Jews saw only the long road before them. And they complained that they did not have the strength for the journey. God was asking them, according to them, to do the impossible. Everything that they thought was contrary of everything they thought was contrary to what they had been taught. But certainly the Bible, the Bible tells us that we have hope. In the Bible, God promised never to abandon people and to walk with them during discouragement. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, the 6th verse, God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them, for the Lord your God uh, is the one who goes with you. He will not fail or forsake you. 
Isaiah chapter 41 and 10, God says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says that God counsels people to be strong and be courageous. How many times do you hear that folks say that to you in the church? People would say, they tell you, you've got to be strong. you got to be encouraged. Don't give up. But yet, we are still human. We get discouraged. Even Christians get discouraged. Even Christians want to give up. There are those that are among us, and I hope no one will deny it's time when you don't even feel like going to church. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I want to stay home. Because you get discouraged. According to the Mary Webster Dictionary, discouragement means being deprived of hope or courage or hindered by disfavor. When Christians feel discouraged, they may feel they have lost the ability to trust in God or hope. Discouragement is often caused when our hopes and our expectations are firmly set on something or someone and something happens that robs us of fulfilling those hopes or those expectations. Sometimes these hopes and expectations are not realistic, nor are they biblical. We can have expectations of God that often do not align with Scripture, and we can often be discouraged when God does not live up to our hopes or our expectations. This is a double journey because when the picture in our mind of how God should behave does not match the reality of our expectations, then we are tempted to question God's integrity. We start feeling that God is letting us down. We start feeling that our hope, that our faith is in vain, and it begins to creep constantly into our thinking. There are things that make us discouraged. People make us discouraged. Our expectations of people, our family members can make us discouraged. Situations can make us discouraged. Illness can make us discouraged. You can live a long time, never get sick. But somebody says you grow older, you check engine light, it starts coming on. Do I have any witnesses here? Y'all don't know about checking. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you gotta check to see what's wrong with you. It can cause you to be discouraged. And I'm aware that many Christians live with perpetual disappointment and become discouraged because they don't tap into the fullness of what God has to offer. And often, uh, if the truth was told, we are like that, I am like that. We are in Christ. And, and yet, because there's so many things that overwhelm us, the discouragement causes us to just focus on that. The chapter begins with a message of encouragement for down the tribe of Jerusalem. The city has suffered more than enough. Its time of punishment was over. Preparations were to be made for the king's glorious return. The city's restoration was sure, for God's decree is reliable, unlike frail persons in their promises, which fade like grass before a hot wind. Jerusalem was to proclaim the good news of God's return to the other cities of Judah, and like a shepherd tenderly holding his sheep to his chest, the Lord would carry the exiles back to the land. The same mighty arm that destroyed his enemies would protect his people. 
For tired men, discouraged exiles, this promise of restoration may have seemed like wishful thinking. They felt abandoned by you ever felt abandoned? You ever felt abandoned by you felt, have you ever felt that you were in a room and folks around you, but you were still by yourself? And you may have wondered if God can really deliver me. And so Isaiah asked the question. He says to them, after listening to them and their complaints and everything they've gone through, he says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, that my way is hid from the Lord, and that my judgment is passed over from my God? And the Lord reminded his people of his power, of his sovereignty, and his ability and might to alleviate their doubts. He says to them, don't forget that I am the creator of the universe. I am that I am who demonstrated immeasurable power and wisdom in forming the heavens and the earth. I was the one. I wish I had somebody here. I tossed the stars in the sky. I was the one that set the plants in place. I was the one, amen, who has sovereignty over the world. Amen. I am the one because the world belongs to me. You give me the scripture say the earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof, the day that dwell within. Amen. He is sovereign over his world, exercising absolute, absolute control over the nations and their puny rulers. He is infinitely superior to idols. The stars of the heaven made God according to Cain's thought, mere servants who reported for duty when God called. But this is the day. God is the only one that can deliver what we need him to deliver. God can deliver. And this is the thing that I want you to understand that I believe and that I stand on today. What I want to leave with you today is that God can deliver his people from bondage because of his authority. Now, now mind you, I didn't say my authority because of his power and wisdom are unlimited. He gives superhuman strength to those who rely on him. My brothers and sisters, today, God can and God will. God knows how we feel. God knows how we feel. And God is adequate to meet our every need. We can never obey God and listen in our own. You can't do it by yourself. If you think that you have the power to do it by yourself, then go ahead and do it. But you're going to find out very quickly that your power is not good enough. If your power was good enough, you wouldn't need to go to the doctor. If your power was good enough, you wouldn't have to worry about your bills. I want to help this somebody here. If your power was good enough, you wouldn't have to worry about family problems. But you have discovered that no matter how smart you are, no matter how bad big you are, and no matter how bad you are, you still can't handle it by yourself. But with God on your side, I said with God on your side, He gives you superhuman strength to those who rely on Him. God knows how we feel fit. We can never obey God in our strength, but we can always trust Him to provide the strength that we need. Why are we here today? Because I trust God. Why am I here today? Because I trust God. Why am I here with the disappointments in my life? Because I Trust God. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you got pain in your life, just like I did. Every day I wake up, pain in my back, pain in my leg. Amen. Went to doctors, did all kinds of shots, but I still got pain. But why am I here? Not because of the doctors. I'm not here because of me, but I'm here because I trust God. Y'all are here because I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to trust Him when I can't even see my way. Some people say it don't make no sense, but it makes a whole lot of sense. Because I realize who it is who has kept me. If we trust ourselves, we will faint. We will fall. But if we wait on the Lord by faith, and we will receive.
receive strength for the journey. The word wait, and y'all remember he said wait on the Lord does not suggest we sit around and do nothing. It means to hope, to look to God for all we need. I'm looking, is anybody else looking? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking down the road. I'm, I'm looking down the road. I'm looking down my life. I can't testify. You are looking at your neighbor tell them, I'm not finished yet. I'm not done. They put a timetable on me. They said it was over. They said that you are quick and sit down. But let me tell you something, that I'm trusted in God, and because of that, I'm looking down the road and seeing that God has something for me. I'm walking by faith. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm looking. I'm acting like everything's going to be all right. I'm looking at anyone. Nobody stand in my way. They stand in your way, but learn how to step over them. But keep on going because God, my God, has something. You know, people like you. They like to block your path. They like to keep you from being what you need to be. Amen. 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 Do I have any witnesses? But you got to look. You got to have hope to look to God and all we need. Amen. This is this this is my uh, meditators, character, and promises. Pray. And seeking to glorify him. Amen. I, I understand. I, I've gone through a period where I was struggling with feelings of anxiety. The problem with a lot of us as Christians, we don't want to tell folks our weakness because they will take our weakness and use it against us. Y'all gonna hear me today. But but I got a testimony. I wonder if anybody else got a testimony here. I got a testimony. I, I, I struggle through the anxiety. I struggle through the guilt. Of my performance as a Christian, then God showed me that I was looking at myself and my flaws incorrectly. I was too busy looking at myself when I needed to look at Him. God, are you gracious? Can I tell you something? God understands that we have faults. And I, and I just added this in this morning, but I got to tell you, God is saying, God isn't looking for good people. If he was good, you didn't need it. Y'all, y'all missed that one. I have not come for the righteous, Jesus said, but I've come for the sinner. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees being hypocrites. And God was the, God is looking for somebody that needs him. God is looking for something in the Bible that he can work on. Is there anybody here that has told the Lord? What I discovered in the midst of going this group, what I discovered in the midst of all that is that in my discouragement, that my weakness is a requirement to receive his working power and being. Because we will always be flawed as human beings, but when we begin to think we can handle things on our own, we start to fail. We begin to lose our peace and our direction and must work for our salvation. When we start to feel this way, it's a sign that we may strive by our power and not rest in his promise and his power when Jesus simply said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Don't be so foolish to think that you can make it. I'm the only one that can lift you up. I'm the only one that can pull you out of the fire. I'm the only one. You let somebody else try to pull you, you might pull them down with you. Yeah, well, that's why sometimes, that's why sometimes you gotta be careful who you talk to. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> you gotta be careful because what we, they can't handle what you're going through because they can barely handle what they're going through. Do I have some witnesses here? Oh, this is, why am I here? God? Why am I feeling this way? God says, because I've kept you humble. Oh, oh I, I, I've kept you to a place where I can use you. Amen. I've I, I kept you where, where you can see the flaws. But yet I have covered them up with my love. I, I've covered them up with my blood. And so my first thing I said in, this, in, in the midst of all the discouragement is that he tells me, don't forget that you need me. 
You need me. God, we need you. We need you. You're not even need the Lord. You come here. I don't have to do this very good. Oh, but I come back. If you get out of here, if you really know that you need God, you have tried everything else. And you ever got to a place in your life when you see when you really know when you're going through something, when you have to get on your knees. I'm talking about get on your knees. I mean, if, if, I mean, if you can get up, get on your knees. Or even, I, I don't want to sit down somewhere, but you got to have a talk with God. And you got to tell God that I need you. I need you. I need you. Sometimes you got to get up. Come on with me, somebody. Sometimes you're going to have some tears. But I tell you, stay right there. I tell you, stay right there and tell God I need you. Anybody ever told God I need you? Anybody here you've been in a hospital room? Come on, help me here. You didn't know what you were going to do. The doctors have given up on you. The folks have walked out and shook their head. Everybody that came in the room was crying. You were the only one that didn't know why they was crying. Because they knew what somebody else had said. But you had enough sense to say, God. I need you. I, I, I know I got some witnesses here. That God made a way for you. I wish I had some witnesses here. Some of y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. As many biographies that I've had in my life. And when they came back, it was all negative. In spite of what the doctor said, I tell you that God still has the power. That God still has the glory. Because he's a doctor in a sick room. There's somebody who the court. They told you you was going to lose. You never going to lose your house. You were not going to lose your property, but you were going to lose your mind. The same God, you said, I'm still here. And I got better than what I used to have. I, I got better because of what the Lord has did. Because I Talking to somebody, no, can I tell you? Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged, but hold on to what you got. Hold on to what you got. Can I tell, 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 tell your neighbor, hold on to what you got? Why? Because they still here by the grace of God. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not a mistake that you're here. It's, it's not just a coincidence that you're here. But it's because God's been. You've had some messed up time in your life. You've had some folks that you couldn't trust. But thank God, I'm still. I'm still here. I'm still here. Somebody, somebody high five and say, I'm still here. Come on, don't be scared. Don't be scared. You would high five at the football game. You would high five at the But say, I'm still here.
in control. Oh, glory to God. Aye, aye. Oh, glory.